Okay, and now Matt Brennan. I know he's a popular, popular request for presenting, and I'm like the anti-IT dude here, so we got that. We're, we're still with a UK speaker, but now we're going to talk to them about EAT and EU. We're going to talk about WeChat marketing in China. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, okay. Awesome. Yeah, okay. Let's kick off. A little bit of interaction to start, okay? Um, what is WeChat? One sentence. Okay, can, can you actually describe, can anyone give a shot of describing WeChat in one sentence? All about chat. <laughs> All about chat. Okay, anyone else? Um, Shout out. Facebook Messenger Everything? Online chat. Online chat? Make a phone call? No, Facebook on your mobile phone. All your okay. life in one application. All your life in one application, I like that. <laughs> A social ecosystem. A social ecosystem. Okay. Oh, okay. One more, last one in the back there. Oh, I like that one, Charles. Okay, it's the new internet. Well, if you speak to the founder of WeChat and you ask him this question, he'll say something like this. He'll say, uh, WeChat is not a platform. WeChat is a tool. Okay, it's a tool that helps you get stuff done fast. You use it and go. Um, if you speak to Pony Ma, founder of um, Tencent, he'll say, actually, WeChat is email. Um, it's uh, a short, fast email. But because it's so fast, you don't think it's email. Um, but I prefer this, this is how I would uh, describe it. I would say WeChat um, is China's operating system for your life. <laughs> That's what it is, okay? I'm going to show you why a little bit later on, okay? Um, let's, let's get into, well, you know, in the, in the States you're doing this and in China you're doing that, right? That, that's, that, that's, that's what's going on. Um, and if you're in China, you have to use WeChat. You've got to deal with it. There's pretty much no way around WeChat in China. Yeah? Um, so when we look at the payments market in China, I'm going to talk about payments first. Um, this is 2004. All right? This is what was going on in China in 2004 for mobile payments. 14. Yeah? 14. Oh, sorry, two, uh, 2014. Yeah, 2014. Um, it's kind of uh, an Alipay monopoly going on there. Um, 2015. Uh, Tenpay, which is WeChat Pay and QQ Wallet, has uh, pretty much doubled their share now to almost 20%. Um, last year, ah, WeChat Pay is now at almost 40% of that market. And this year, well, this could be the year that we finally see WeChat Pay draw even with Alipay. So this is an amazing trend, an unbelievable trend, um, that if you'd said that a couple of years ago, that, um, that Alipay would lose their monopoly in payments, um, you, most people would think you're crazy. Um, this is what's going on in China in terms of mobile payments. Uh, this is from the Financial Times uh, about a month ago. They put this out. And compared to the States, uh, you can see the States is there. It's just very small. Um, and we're about here now. Um, you know, we're looking about on mobile payments in China. We're looking at about seven, eight trillion dollars running through through. Um, through Alipay and WeChat, basically. Um, we don't get any direct data um, from, from Tencent. This is the closest thing we have, okay? This is the amazing trend. This, is, this data is very accurate. So this is from Tencent Financial Reports. This is what's happening on WeChat. Um, Lucky Money, which uh, I'm not gonna go into, I assume you know what that is. Um, this is when Lucky Money was launched first, yeah? So before that, WeChat Pay, not really a big thing. When it's launched, it goes up, bum, 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 bum. and in the last year and a half, payments through WeChat have gone through the roof. Yeah, it's going absolutely crazy right now. Um, this is from their financial reports where they put other revenue. Um, that includes cloud payments as well and a couple of other small things, but the lion's share of this is WeChat Pay. And yeah, lucky money was the uh, Pearl Harbor attack, um, which uh, 
You know, that's exactly what Jack Ma said about, about uh, Lucky Money and where, what WeChat Pay has done in the last few years to his company. Um, it's, it's a war, and uh, WeChat is, uh, you know, is starting to make some serious dents into, into Jack's empire. Um, so, in, in China we have this really crazy situation where we have these two, these two apps are fighting like crazy. Um, basically, WeChat's a social app that's done a really good job of becoming a payments platform. And Alipay is a payments platform that's trained desperately to become a social app. Um, and it's rolling out all these different social features all the time to try and get traction in social. Uh, but it's really, really difficult. Um, they're not, you know, they haven't succeeded so far. It's possible they might get traction somehow in the future. Um, but right now, Chinese users, their habits are ingrained. They use uh, Tencent products for social and uh, they're, they're not so hot on using uh, Alipay for that stuff. How's Apple Pay doing in the market? Well, it's doing nothing, is the answer, <laughs> okay? So um, this is some data from about a month or two back. Um, it's a very small data set, admittedly. Um, it's from convenience stores in Beijing, Zhongguanzun. So this is kind of like Silicon Valley of China. Um, this, this area of Beijing is just full of techie guys. They all have iPhones, they all love Apple, and nobody's using Apple Pay. Right? When you go into a convenience store, that's what it looks like in terms of payments. Uh, and that's what it looks like in terms of the staff actually knowing how to use Apple Pay. Most staff don't even know how to use it. So on WeChat, we've got the e-commerce is, is, is taking off a lot. Um, it's actually quite complex. Okay, uh, WeChat, in terms of um, e-commerce on the platform and... and, and, and it's, it's happening in different ways. It's happening through official accounts, it's happening directly through individual sellers, um, it's happening in groups, peer to peer. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but you know, last year, broadly speaking, uh, estimates from McKinsey, um, e commerce on WeChat doubled in terms of the number of users who are buying things directly on WeChat. Um, and the number of payments running through WeChat, this is from Mary Meeker report last year. Um, it's off the scale compared to um, you know, other, other things like Alipay. Alipay has, a, as we look, has a, a big market share, but um, Alipay transactions tend to be larger. So you know, things that like you buy on uh, Timor or Taobao, whereas uh, a lot of these are micropayments, admittedly. But what we can see from this trend is that uh, Chinese users are very, very, very comfortable now making payments on WeChat. But it's not just payments, okay? The future of WeChat, I was traveling here um, yesterday, and uh, I, I discovered an amazing case study. The future of WeChat is at McDonald's right now, okay? What, what the hell am I talking about? Um, the future of McDonald's. If you go to McDonald's in Shenzhen, like I did yesterday, okay? When you make a payment with WeChat, it now links directly to their loyalty scheme. You don't need to do anything. You just get loyalty points straight away once you set it up. And then after that, you get a receipt with a QR code. You scan the QR code, and then you get your FARPIA, digital FARPIA, straight away. Yeah? And if you link your WeChat up, if you're running enterprise, you can potentially send that to your boss with a couple of clicks. And then 20 minutes after they, I've ordered my meal on their service account, they send me a, customer, they send me a satisfaction survey to complete. I fill that out, and then they send me a, a WeChat coupon, which I can send to my friends. So, what, 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 uh, you, you can check, test this out. Just go to McDonald's here in Shenzhen, right? This is happening. This is launched literally a few days ago. This is the future of, of what, what WeChat looks like now in China, right? It's, it's for a business, it's everything. It's loyalty. Um, it's, it's customer feedback. It's, um, it's invoicing. It's social with coupons. It's not just payments. It's, it's the whole circle of what you need as a business can be done. And this is all just one click, one click, as, as a user type thing. Um, WeChat's goal is friction equals zero. Yeah, that's what they want to make as a user. That's what WeChat's amazing at, making everything as easy as possible for you to, to do as a user. Um, in terms of cross-border, okay, WeChat Pay is starting to go outside of China. We're starting to see um, a lot of deals being brokered um, globally, um, partnerships. This one was announced a few days ago. WeChat Pay is now moving into Canada. Um, you know. 
moving into Canada. Earlier this year, uh, they, were, they were talking with Stripe. Uh, I don't think anything's been announced there, but um, it will be uh, later this year, no doubt. Um, they're, they're doing deals with lots of platforms, and we're going to see WeChat Pay uh, open up globally with a lot of different partners in 2017. Uh, they're behind Alipay. Alipay is definitely ahead internationally, um, but you know WeChat Pay has a major advantage, which is many programs and official accounts. So let's uh, let's just uh, break it down. So that's some some data. Now I'm just going to look at some practical stuff for you. How do we take payments? How do we uh, set up a store on WeChat? Just give you some practical advice. Um, there's different ways that we can take payments on WeChat. Um, here I've just we're going to cover four. Okay. If you want to take payments on WeChat as a business, um, you know, as a small business, you might know yourself in China, small businesses, mom and pop stores, they use personal accounts. Right? That's the preferred method in China as a business. Um, it's very simple, it's super easy. You just print your QR code and slap it down. That's all you need to do. Yeah? Um, if you're doing that, okay, there's, it's, not, it's not a great system. It's only really suitable for a, a very small business. Um, you're going to have to link your Chinese bank card to your personal account. You've got to have a Chinese phone number. Um, you're only going to be receiving RMB. Um, you have to pay 0.1% when you take that money out of your personal account and put it back in a, in a bank card. Um, you've got lots of transaction limits. So you're going to be limited by daily transactions, um, transactions per time. There's also, a, 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 if you're running huge amounts of transactions, like very large amounts, you'll get blocked as well, right? There's, you can't do that. Um, so it's not very professional, and uh, it's really only suitable for small, uh, you know, entrepreneurs and small offline businesses. But uh, if that's you, then great. It's a great option. Um, it's very, very convenient. Um, let's have a look at some Chinese store options, right? So if you want to do some e-commerce um, uh, online on WeChat, then you can use uh, JD. JD is the official e-commerce partner of Tencent. And um, JD looks like this in WeChat. It's down here in the WeChat wallet. Um, it's here on Discovery. And when you open up JD, it looks like this. Um, JD has about one quarter of China's B2C online um, shopping market. Okay, again, uh, this is a... Jack is owning most of this market, but uh, definitely uh, JD is, is a solid set number two and uh, a very good option um, if you're a larger brand. Um, you know, Tao Mount Tibor blocked on WeChat, right? Just to make that clear, if you don't know that, um, for, for quite obvious reasons. Um, you can use the most popular option for third party um, solution for e commerce on WeChat is Yozan. Yeah, so Yozan is a bit like Shopify, yeah, and uh, Yozan, there's lots of um, small uh, companies and, and media use Yozan, and there's also quite some quite big brands that use it as well, so um, it's, a, it's a very, very popular option, actually. Um, it's not free, you've got to pay to use it properly, uh, it's an annual fee, there, about 5,000 RMB, it's in Chinese, you've got standard store templates, so every Yozan store kind of looks the same. Uh, they've got the logo at the bottom. You can't really customize that. Um, but in a way, that can be good because uh, Chinese customers, Chinese users know Yozan and they trust it. So you've got that familiarity. Um, and again, you've got a link to uh, Chinese. You, you, as a foreigner, as non Chinese, uh, you, you're going to have to work with someone who's local to, to set it up. Uh, another option could be uh, Weidian. Uh, Weidian uh, is also a really good option for small vendors, entrepreneurs. And um, it's actually free. Uh, this is a good, you know, case study uh, here. If you want to scan the QR code and check out Wayne in store, uh, this is for a Swiss wine company. That's uh, their e-commerce store that we help them set up. Um, similar to Yozan in, in many of the uh, points that I've just found. I think the, the key difference is it's currently free, um, and it's usually positioned more for like small sellers. Uh, I don't think there's too many big brands using Wayne uh, another option, if we want to do cross-border, right, is that we can apply to uh, WeChat Payment uh, Cross-Border Program, which is at this address here, and uh, you, they will uh, open up an account for you. Um, and if you do that, well, you know, you, you, you don't need a Chinese business license. You don't need uh, anything. You can just use your local business license, so that's great. Um, you, uh, the account creation is free. 
and uh, but they're going to take three percent from you. They can only do these currencies right now: uh, USD, Euro, uh, Japanese yen, pounds, uh, etc. And the settlement is usually five. Uh, 5k USD. Right? You can actually get them to settle with you for less, uh, but they'll take uh, they'll take some fee for that. Um, just to be clear with that, like they, then when you when you set up this account, they're just giving you like a, a code. You need to sort of uh, usually a uh, business will have to once they've got that uh, account with uh, WeChat Global, uh, WeChat Pay Global, they'll have to get some developer to integrate that for them. Five thousand per day or per year. Uh, just per time, once you've got five thousand dollars on the account, then they'll send it over to you. Yeah. So that depends how long it takes for you to get to that amount. Um, Global Alipay, quite similar. Yeah, you can apply for them if you want to use Alipay uh, to take payments from. You know, people are using these to take payments from Chinese tourists, right? A lot of them offline stores. Um, if you're in a place um, in the States where there's tons of Chinese tourists, getting them to pay on Alipay and WeChat Pay has got a lot of advantages. Um, it's not only convenient for the user, um, but they can also got a record when they make that payment. Uh, they can, when they're making the payment, they can see the value of what they're paying in RMB. So for a Chinese um, consumer, that's really, really helpful. Um, you know, it's got lots of these like, little advantages. Um, so for, for Alipay, it's you know same thing. Three percent is what they're taking. Uh, you, overseas business license is all you need, and um, uh, what else? Do they, yeah, they've got slightly more currencies. Um, you can also use. There's options like this popping up. This is uh, run by my friend Thomas. Uh, what the chat? They focus on cross border as well as an e-commerce platform. So you can think of what the chat as just like a, a cross border Yozan. It's basically what it is. It's a cross-border WeChat Shopify. Um, and they do a pretty good job. It's not free. These are the, their prices right now um, for the packages. I wouldn't recommend that one, but these two are pretty cool. Um, if you want to, for certain people who don't have a presence in China and just want to get up and doing WeChat e-commerce quickly, then this is, this is a good option. Um, and then we've got the grey areas popping up as well. We've got lots of like small Chinese companies that are offering solutions for, for SME companies. Uh, when I was in Thailand in February, um, in Chiang Mai, I saw WeChat QR codes everywhere. Because there's just tons and tons of Chinese in Chiang Mai now. And um, they all want to pay with WeChat and Alipay. Um, but the solution they're using is usually something like this, which is actually, I don't even know if this is legal or not, to be honest. Um, they're just uh, running this. This is like small Chinese tech companies that are offering solutions because WeChat and Alipay are only interested in the big guys, really. So, um, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a market there, but I think you do need to be careful. Uh, the platforms like this that they're using, uh, they could be shut down overnight, you know. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend these solutions. Okay, so that's my introduction for China's OS for life. I'm sorry, I only got like a, a little bit of time so I can just whiz through some stuff. Uh, we have got a panel discussion later on, and I've got a workshop tomorrow where I'll go into lots more detail. Thanks, guys.